<laughs> All right, so now we're recording and now I can actually start. So this is Fab 40 cl class one, session one, meeting one, whatever we're calling it. Um, and um, this is the end of May in 2019. I don't know what date it is because um, I'm trying to get packed for Hawaii and all I know is that I leave for Hawaii on May 30th <laughs> with yeah, the company good. trip. That's all I know. So I don't know what day today is. Um, <laughs> so I guess that makes today the 28th of May. Um, so I'm Betsy Bishop and I live in Virginia. I started with the company in the very beginning. Um, before I came to the company, it was still Touchstone Crystal, uh, not by Swarovski, but just Touchstone Crystal was the name, and it was a do-it-yourself beading company. Uh, it had been patterned after Creative Memories, and um, after about two years in business, they saw that that was not going to fly. People were not didn't really want to make their own jewelry, and it just was not a good thing. I mean, they do want to make their own jewelry, but it wasn't good for Party Plan. Um, and so in late 2008, they flipped it over to Finished Goods. Um, so for example, when you see that a necklace has um, 1408 NF, it means necklace finished, as opposed to necklace unfinished. <laughs> so the good news is back then, you know, before I, sh before I came on the scene, people had to, you know, make their own jewelry. Now that we're in the company, you know, you don't have to make your own jewelry. So that's really good news. Um, but I've seen a lot over the years. But the neat thing is that our compensation plan has largely stayed the same, give or take maybe one or two slight, slight tweaks. And it's because the compensation plan is such a good one, it's such a solid one. The core of the compensation plan is something called group leader. And group leader is where you basically have three people on your team and it qualifies you to earn 40% on your own sales, 9% on your personal sponsors, and 5% on everybody else that they bring into the business. Um, and it's always been that way since day one because that um, has that is the building block to our career plan, to going up the ranks. So you see people with the BMWs and the Austria trip and all that, all they've done is focus on themselves reaching group leader and creating more group leaders on their team. That's it. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is what is a group leader? How do you look beyond group leader? Not to, not to ranks, other ranks, but how do you look beyond the minimums? What does it actually look like? It has to play out on a, on a monthly basis. Um, and for you to do some, some soul searching tonight about what do you really want? What are you willing to do over the next four and a half weeks to move yourself toward group leader? Um, I'm not interested in heroics at all because my goal is to help you create something that's far more systematic than that. I'm not looking for um, you know, a crazy pace of, oh, I've got to do 12 parties in a month to get to group leader. Nothing could be further from the truth. And so, but we are gonna talk about how can we get the calendar that we really want, and I'm gonna have you all brainstorm with some of that. So, um, let's see. Oh, and hi, Karen, good to see you or not see you sorry and lisa leclaire good to see you or not see you lisa why can't we see you can you hear me i'm there you are here oh there I'm, you are karen i'm here Yay. you just can't see me <laughs> not, fair. not fair all right lisa i'm so happy to see you that's great and oh i can't hear you though Oh, well, okay. So what I want to do is share my screen to the slides. And I think what I'll do is, is I'll run through some things, but you know, seriously, you can, um, you can interject with questions if you want to, that's perfectly fine. Um, okay. Can you all see group leader minimums? Focus yes. passes? Okay, yes. great. All right. So what I want to do is just talk about nuts and bolts. I'm going to try to keep this, this call tonight uh, about nuts and bolts and give you some things to really think hard about. Group leader is not for everybody. It's not a pace that everybody is going to want to keep, but I want you to know what it is so that you can understand um, that it's not, a, it's not about heroics at all. It's about creating a pattern of business for yourself that pays you the maximum income possible for the amount of work that you're going to put into it. So group leader minimums, this is only the minimums, and we're going to talk, should talk a little bit about focusing past it. Personal retail sales in a particular month 
let's let's say we're talking about June, okay? Because that's our goal. Personal retail sales in June of twelve hundred dollars for you. Only twelve hundred dollars. That's the absolute bare bones minimum. Now, how many parties is that? Do you think? Two, one and a half. Two. Sometimes one. Okay. Yeah. Two. One just between one and two. Yeah. Um, okay. The second requirement. So, can you do one to two parties sometime during June? Is is a question to ask yourself. In order to just hit a minimum. Um, number two, three PSAQs. So this is where we usually spend the most time. <laughs> Personally sponsored is the PS. So that means anybody that you have brought into business. It doesn't have to be this month. It could have been in the past. Active means she sold a dollar every third month. That keeps her active, either A1, A2, or A3. After A3, they go inactive, and that starts at I4, I5, I6, and they go all the way down the line. Um, but active means she sold a dollar every third month. We don't have anything that's a dollar, um, just so you know. Um, and qualified, which means that she sold $500 in a single month at some point. It doesn't have to be her first month. One of the sticking points people get really confused on is that qualified and Glambassador have nothing to do with each other. Right. Glambassador is a part of the Glam plan, which is the new consultant incentives. Qualified is a part of the career plan, and it's a designation that's a, that's a permanent designation, and um, it can never be lost, and it only happens, it has to happen one time. So you could have somebody who came in in December maybe on your team, or last October, and she might be totally inactive, but if she sells $500 in June, she becomes a PSAQ for you. So anybody can become a PSAQ, even down the road. So I want you to keep that in mind, because you may have some people who never qualified, never sold a single thing. They could become a PSAQ of yours, because you need three of them on your team at all times in order to be, or in each month, to get paid as a group leader. The third one is $1,000 of all the sales in the central, this is called your central group, you and they. Uh, a thousand of the sales have to come from the team, not from you. And the total sales with you and the team needs to be $3,500 minimum. So basically that's you, your three people, and anybody else that you've brought on, anybody else that they've brought on. So it could be that it's you and three people and two others that they brought on. Here's the interesting thing. Take a look at number three. A thousand dollars has to come from the team. It, they might that thousand dollars might not come from those three PSAQs. They're active. Maybe they all sold something last month. You sponsor them and they're qualified. But it might be that um, this thousand dollars minimum came from people that they brought into the business onto your team, right? So that means that you are going to be wanting to work with everybody in your central group. Not just because you're going to get paid on them, but also because you want to see them grow, right? Because out of all those people is where all of your other group leaders are going to come from down the road. So $3,500 in minimum in central group sales. So let's take a look at what this means. Let me see if I can figure out how to move my PowerPoint forward. Okay. All right. So if you see this outer ring, the outer ring is group leader at $3,500. And essentially, assuming a 750 party average, we're looking at five total parties between four people. Mm. Now, so give me some of the ways that that might look. Where might those parties be coming from? Like, what, what would be a good breakdown of five parties among four people? If you want to get paid as a group leader. Like how many how many parties would you do out of the five? At least three. three. I would say two. two okay. I would say I'm I would do four. Okay. So maybe two, three, or four. Okay. And then somebody is doing the other two or three parties, right? On the team. You know, keep in mind, remember we said that the team, and they were talking minimums here, that the team has got to sell a thousand of it, right? Mm -hmm. But probably at least two of those parties are going to have to come from the team. Maybe one, but maybe two. Okay. So you know that as the outer ring, to get to the minimum, you're looking at at least five 
parties held, which could mean seven parties booked, right? Eight parties booked maybe, but five parties held, two or three of which are gonna to need to at least be yours. So that's your, there's your minimum. I wanna challenge you to look a little bit harder at this because that doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? There are four of you, surely between the four of you can do five parties, right? Let's take a look at another layer. This is an arbitrary number, but I want you to think about this. What if your inner ring, and we'll talk about the bullseye in a minute, what if your inner ring was a $5,000 central group, which is essentially seven parties? What are some ways of breaking up seven parties between you and three other people? What might those numbers look like? There's no wrong answer, but just shout them out. You would do how many and they would do how many? You would do a minimum of four. Okay. And that'd be about 3,000 in sales. Okay. And maybe three, three, two, and two. Or three. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so if, so if you did three parties and among the three of them, they did four parties total, there's your seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a $5,000 group. Now let's say, so remember that if you're doing four parties and let's say you're selling $3,000, and you're earning 40%, how much are you making? 3,000 times 40%. 1,200. Yeah, 1200. pretty nice. And then let's say the other 2,000 is coming from people who are earning you 9%. So 2,000 times 9%. Close to 200. 180. 180. 180. So now you've got $1,380 in income from a $5,000 group. That's pretty nice. That's not bad. That's not bad income for the month, right? You've only gone out the door four times. Right. And now you're earning $1,380. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. As opposed to selling $3,000 yourself, earning 30%, which is $900. Yeah, which I'm tired of doing. <laughs> I love hearing you say that. All right, let me, <laughs> let me show you a bullseye. I want, so here's the thing. This outer ring here is great. This is the minimum <laughs> number. Okay. If you're only, if, if we focus only on the minimum number, we are going to be stressed out every single month. Where are my five parties coming from? Cause you know, you get what you focus on. If we're only looking for five parties among three people, we're going to be stressed out. Let's say we work. We always, we're always looking for seven parties one way or another from us from the team total for that $5,000 number, because that's a pretty nice little chunk of change for going out the door four times maybe, right? But I wanna focus you on something that will keep you from ever worrying about getting paid as a group leader again. And then we're gonna talk about how to make this happen. What if you made a <coughs> of a $10,000 central group? So that's 14 parties. So tell me what would 14 parties look like? Still the three others with you? Just three others? Oh, it depends. You tell me. <laughs> it's like there has to be a few more. There you go. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what if you're doing four of those parties and, now, and you've got 10 others? How many people do you think you'd want to have on your team to do 10 more parties besides your four? At least, at at least, at least another five. Another five people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if you had five total and they were each doing two and some were doing one and some were doing three and maybe one of them was doing four. Cause remember how they're all going to have a different and some won't even start because <laughs> there's always yeah. that. There are always those renegades that are like, Oh, I like the kit. That's all yeah. I wanted actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm basing this scenario on the five people I have on my team, Betsy. Sure. <laughs> it happens a lot. It happens a lot. And so we keep going. But so I want you to think about this. If when you can get to where you have enough people to sustain 14 parties in a month, you're never going to have to worry about getting paid as a group leader again. But here's what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, oops, I keep doing that. How do you get to stability and growth? Stability is one thing. Stability means keeping those, keeping three people. And maybe it's a revolving door. One goes out, another one comes in, another one goes out, another one comes in. You're always got three, right? But again, that keeps us stuck in this. 
always worrying, always worrying, right? So how do we solve that? Essentially, it's on average, at least four parties a month ourselves, because that's where we're going to meet 40 customers, we hope, might be 30, but hopefully 40. And out of those 40 customers, we're gonna find one to two new people every single month to add to our teams, just by, because we will get good at it, just because of practice. And that we're gonna be sponsoring people with a solid set of expectations on both sides, things that they can expect of us and things that we can expect of them. And that we start them with parties on their calendar. Not easy to do, I'm here to tell you. But the harder we try, the more, the more likely we are to succeed. Not everybody, not, every one of, not all of those one to two people coming in is going to do what you're gonna want them to do or, with, or even what they said they were going to do. That's just normal. But we up our chances when we're doing four parties a month, on average, at least. Some people like to do eight for that for rapid growth. I'm just talking about growth. I'm not talking about explosive growth. Explosive growth is eight parties a month. Because at eight parties a month, you're churning through people, you're sorting through people, and you're creating lists of potential consultants. And you end up with, with eight parties a month, you wind up with two to three to four new people every month on your team. And that's real growth. But we're talking about stability and growth, so I don't want to scare you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, uh, next week we're going to be talking about sponsoring with a set of expectations and um, with a set of um, um, goals before they even get started. You know, helping them to use the Ready, Set, Glam guide and things like that. But we're not going to do that this week. We're going to be focusing on how do we get our calendar filled? How do we get to where we want to be in our own personal business? And then from that, how do we grow our team? So it's pretty simple. But the first thing I want to do is see if we can brainstorm a little bit because my guess is that I'm going to stop sharing for the brainstorm part. My guess is that, does anybody here have every party on the calendar that they want for the month of June? Everybody have all the parties they want? Anybody? No. I don't. No. I know no. I don't. Okay, so that's normal, just so you know. This is the senior executive director telling you that's normal. The question is, are you, taking the, are you going to take it as defeat or are no. you going to set a goal that is not compromised, not to be compromised? Because it's really easy to let ourselves off the hook. Right. But let's take it at, at a granular, granular level and you can start taking notes. If you were to tell somebody how to go book a party, what would you say? What would you tell them? Because a lot of times we get stuck and I might say to myself, well, if I had to tell somebody else how to do this, what would I tell them? <laughs> Even though I'm stuck, what would I tell somebody else? It's often really good advice, whatever it is I would say to somebody else. So Start talking as if you're coaching somebody else. What, what, what would you do to book some parties for Zoom? I'm, I'm actually asking you. <laughs> Are you asking? Oh, okay. I'm on it. <laughs> as, as I personally oh, would go back into my parties that I've had mm -hmm. and make a list of all the people that said, oh, I want to do a party, but not right now and circle around and go back to them and see where they're, what they're thinking at that point in time. Okay. So potential, you know? so past potential party leads. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I would probably contact my past hostesses and um, I'd go to my, my cold call list of the people that did their unique clicks. I make a list of them. The ones that you see that are constant those are the people, I mean, right now I got four parties on my calendar for June and they basically were from uh, my unique clicks. I so just, that's, so from your warm call report, yeah, yeah the, mm -hmm. you've been going through and reaching out to those people to offer a party, offer a yes. catalog, yes, strike up a conversation. I'm seeing, because I was seeing the okay. same names for the unique clicks that they're looking and I'm thinking, Good. okay, so I waited a couple months to see if they were back in there. And those are the names I wrote down. Those are the people that I contacted 
And those are the ones that I got parties booked for. Nice. Because if they're doing a neat click all the time, mm -hmm. they must have some kind of an interest. They're interested in something, right? Okay. Right, right. That's those great. are the things that I would do. That's great. I love it. What else? I have a question. Can I ask Debbie? Yes. Uh, hi, Debbie. Hi. So, can you tell me how did you reach out to them? Did you call or text? And what did you say? Well, I called. And I just, you know, I just said, you know, hey, Bonnie, this is Debbie Pickens. How are you doing this evening? Um, I know that you've, you have had a strong interest in Touchstone in the past, and I've noticed that you've done some pretty cool, unique clicking with your thumb there, making it light. And you actually say that? Yeah, I really do. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty unique click. But then she knows we're spending right? on her. That oh, my gosh, sense. you're so funny. I, that makes me excited. I mean, I just keep it light and breezy yeah. and easy and laid back and start a conversation with them and say, you know, I know that you have it. I know that you liked all the blue things that you ordered before, all the blue necklaces. And in this catalog, we have a lot of blue to offer you. Okay. You know, can I send you a catalog? How about can if I call? send you the link to my catalog? You know, would you have an interest in possibly wanting to do a party or a, a, a get together with your five best girlfriends? Okay. And let's, let's show off all that pretty blue jewelry that you like. I don't know. I mean, just keep, I, Betsy, you know me. I'm just like, whatever. You know, I, mean, but I think when phone. you do that, when you do that, it's you're changing. making it about them, not yeah. you right. and what your needs are, but what their needs are, you know? That's a good point. Yeah. But the thumb but then does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, I don't know. I love it. Okay. Yeah. The little clicks with the thumb. <laughs> Um, Lisa LeClaire says, ask if they have any friends getting married anytime soon. Ask who, if they have friends. Just everybody. <laughs> we'll see what she texts back. Yeah. Jackie, you had an idea. Um, my idea was just, I've been looking at some vendor events, and I was wondering, or thinking, maybe I could make some parties out of them. I do... If I show up at a vendor event, I think it's tough to get to the next level with somebody. So I, I guess I was thinking it would be a nice way to meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. but then how do I make it more personal and get to the party? So I see it as an opportunity. I just don't know how to get to that next level. It is really hard and it's all in the follow-up. Yeah. So it it's, it, and it's tough too, if it's not a, you know, business to business thing, if it's, if I'm there as a vendor and people are there just as customers, they don't always want to it doesn't seem like they always want to share. So I, I it's, you know, they, they seem to have so much interest, but then how do you make it a personal party after that? It's, um, it's hard, you know, and for me, it's, it's kind of rare and, and I'll have, I'll have people who ghost me. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just kind of normal. And so I, I feel like, um, it's a fishing expedition and I never quite know if it's going to be a good pond or not. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, Lisa says it's wedding season right now. Birthstone braces make great bridesmaids gifts. That could be five hundred dollars in sales right there. And of course, birthstone braces are a good place to start. It's true. Yeah. I was trying to figure out, Lisa, what you meant though, as far as booking parties. Who are you asking if they have friends getting married? Are you just asking everybody? Friends that she knows. Okay, so she's going around to her friends. I'm reading her chat. I'm not like reading her mind or anything. <laughs> <laughs> crystal ball. She's not in my ear. I'm reading the chat. Um, <laughs> the friends that she knows, um, that, that's how she's getting parties. Yeah. What about your own contact list? Have you all been able to create a contact list of acquaintances? One of the things that I fall down on the job constantly is that I, I mean, I know a million people, but do I actually offer them all parties? And um, I don't because I make assumptions about people and I think, well, um, she's going to think I'm really nuts to even offer this. What is she going to think of me that I even brought it up out of the blue? I still think about those things. I still have that niggling fear in the back of my mind. Um, and, but the reality is I don't know what somebody's thinking. And some of my best parties over the years have ended up being with people 
um, that I never thought would have done a party and ended up doing great ones. So sometimes we are our own biggest enemy when it comes, not enemy, but you know, our biggest hold back when it comes to that, because we think we know what the answer is going to be, or we think we've already asked everybody we know, but in fact, there are those people on the outer fringes that we've just thought, well, we've dismissed from one way, one way or another. Lisa says, I don't know enough people in my new community yet. Lisa, what can you do to go meet some more people? That's, you know, that's always the biggest question, which is, I mean, with a smile as big as yours, I can't even fathom that you haven't met everybody in the entire Pensacola area. Cause that one of the things that I just started doing is looking at Facebook groups and ones that are particular to my area. So like there's, oh. um, there's a bunch of like different neighborhood groups, whether they're gardening groups or whatever, and mm. you join the, the group on Facebook and kind of start chatting with people on there, like commenting on their posts. And then um, people who have like the button open to add a friend, you can kind of go in and see like, are they really open to adding a friend that you kind of, I don't want to say stalking, but <laughs> kind of start looking around and making comments. I've had a couple of people. I don't friend request people. I let them like check me out, see what I'm all about. And then if they want to friend request me, I add them. So that's kind of how I've met a few more people. And oh, then this week I'm good. starting to do more posts about um, what you could get as a hostess, some things that you can earn by being one of my hostesses and just making it clear, like I have a few dates open if you want to, want to host, you know, let me know, whatever. So trying to like build that up a little bit um, through Facebook. And Facebook has a new feature now on pages where when you make a story from your page, there's a swipe up option where they can message you or get to your website or whatever. So I'm trying to figure that out. I haven't totally figured it out yet, but I'm playing around there to see where that gets me as well to kind of branch out in new networks. Wow. That's really smart. That, that's such a great idea. Sorry, I have a huge spider on my laptop. 